um, I guess I better get started. If we should meet in class 
has gone. A chance on a rainy day. Let's sit and drink in a damn. Oh, from, from, from the train. 
this is a very, very, very sad little song. I don't know why I'm playing this to you. The last thing you need living here in Kilo is a very sad song, I know. <laughs> it's not recorded anywhere, it's, it's a song called Tied Up Folks. I just wrote it the other day, so. Sometimes when you write these things, you're so, so glad to be still alive. Say, hey, I'm still alive, everybody. Say, Prove it. I've written a song.
His house is in the village though. He will not see me be stopping To watch his words fill up with snow My little horse must think it's strange Stop without a partner's near. The only other sounds the sweet of easy snow and downy flea. He gives his heart his bells a shake. But I have promises to keep Miles to cool me before I sleep Miles to go before I sleep The woods are lovely, dark and deep But I have promises to It's a very nice kind of Christmas song, isn't it? I can just see myself standing somewhere in the snow just before Christmas. Maybe somewhere like Munster, with the snow falling on my curry burst. <laughs> I'm taking drugs. And uh, I knew I'd stolen the end of the song from somewhere. The about six months ago. Where have I fucking stolen this from? It, it might be a good idea to, to think and find out. And then one day it just came to me, yeah. It's the end of a, a Joni Mitchell song called Shades of Scarlet Conquering from a great album called The Hissing of Summer Loins. And it ends like this. <laughs> going to steal, steal from the best, that's the way I see it. So, <laughs> I once met Joni Mitchell, I was walking through um, uh, Soho in London and uh, I wasn't looking where I was going, I was talking to my friend and I suddenly banged into this woman and I stepped on her foot. You know when someone stands on your heel here, it's really sort of, ah. and she just went, ah, bastard. <laughs> I thought, Christ, it's Joni Mitchell. <laughs> Sorry, and I just kept walking. And then that night I said to my friends, yeah, I was uh, down in Soho with Joni Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't played in my hometown in uh, the Kingdom of Fife in Scotland for something like 12 years. Uh, my hometown's called Kirkcaldy. It 
means Church of the Devil. As I said, I've been there for about 12 years. That they asked me not to come back. So. I thought it's really time I played in my hometown again. So I got myself a, a concert, and I was tra I decided to travel up to Scotland to play there, and um, I decided to get the small rush hour train from the city of Edinburgh across to to Fife. It's a real fucked up train. You, you have them here in Germany, I've seen them. Uh, I'm getting one tomorrow to Copenhagen. And, uh, and so I got on the small train. It was really full of the, the five people called Fifers. It was full of Fifers all going home in the Russia and they're all talking away. I thought, oh, this is lovely. And uh, everyone's standing. There was only one seat left on the train, and it was next to me. I don't know why, but there was. <laughs> so the train stopped at a little station, and lots more people got on. And uh, a guy, a young guy, sat next to me, maybe 28 years old, and wearing a suit. And he, as soon as he sat down, he, he seemed to fall asleep. He just went, ah! <laughs> he kind of fell against me. And his, his leg was against my leg. I was wearing my shorts, and I could feel his body heat coming through. From his leg. <laughs> and he just moved. I, I didn't want him to wake up. But why are you moving away from my leg? That's a kind of stupid thing you think, isn't it? So I just moved away like this. But he seemed to know there was more room. He's like, ah! <laughs> and his leg moved over here, and then he's put his hand on my knee, so his hand is here, and I'm like, fuck you! <laughs> so I moved away again. But there was really nowhere left to go. I was up against the window. <laughs> oh, look at that interesting cow. <laughs> and he did it again, he went, ah! And now his, his hand was right up my, my thigh. And I thought, fuck, this has got to stop. I thought, I don't believe he's asleep. I think he's a gay fifer. But just my fucking luck. So I thought, what am I going to do about this? It was, it was ridiculous. And, you know, it's, if, I did, if I got on a train and did that to a woman, I, I'd be in real trouble. You know, so, oh. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so I thought, right, what am I going to do about this? So I thought, I know, I'll say something very loud and, and unusual so, and so that everyone else in the train hears, but I'll say it to him. And uh, then he won't, be, he won't be able to stay in his secret gay world with me. He'll have to come back and be in the public world. Does that make sense? It's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> well, I thought it was anyway. And, uh, so I thought, right, what am I going to say? It's going to have to be really good. So I thought, oh yeah, got it. So I had a little <laughs> elbowed him as hard as I could in his left titter. <laughs> and looked around. And, so I said, I'm sorry to wake up, pal. Uh, I just, uh, I just wondered. Um, did you hear on the news about Sting? You know the singer Sting. He's dead. He's been killed. And I was going, what? So I said, Sting. You know the singer. He was uh, in a helicopter down in Southampton on the south coast of England. Uh, he was in a chopper and it, it crashed. You know, it was going... Into the water. And now Sting's fucking dead. Did you hear that on the news? <laughs> Up inside. So now he was really awake. You're saying Sting's dead? So I said, yeah, he was in a chopper crash, like I say, you know, in the water, totaled. So the guy goes, fucking hell. And he has a friend sitting behind him, so he goes, here, Divi, Divi, did you hear what this guy says? This guy says that Sting's been killed in a chopper crash down in Southampton. I thought, oh, fuck, he's not gay, he really was asleep. <laughs> so his friend Dave says, is that right, pal? Sting's been killed in a chopper crash. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and now everyone in the trains heard this, because that was the idea. Everyone's going, do you hear that? That guy says Sting's, Sting's been killed. And there's, there's a woman going, oh! <laughs> and just bought his greatest ex. <laughs> he was a gold. <laughs> I'm just sitting there really quiet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 God, what have I 
done. So the train's going along and everyone's freaking out. There's a real big guy standing up about my age. And I could tell he didn't believe any of this crap. He's standing up holding on like this. Excuse me, pal. Yeah? If Sting's just been killed, how can you be so sure? I was just in a pub and I was watching the TV news in the pub and there was nothing about Sting being killed. How can you be so sure if it's not in the, the news in the pub? So now everyone's listening to me like this. So I went, uh, my girlfriend works down in Southampton and uh, she told me on my mobile phone. <laughs> and I was, oh yeah. I was thinking, Christ, I don't have a mobile phone. I was like, please don't let me say, let's see your fucking mobile phone then. But of course he didn't, because that would be going too far. But he just listened to it, he goes, oh yeah. He says, well look pal, news travels very fast this, these days as we all know. If the chopper's just gone down, how can they be so sure that Sting's in the chopper? <laughs> um, well, uh, the chopper went right past the building where my girlfriend works. And she was looking out the window. She saw the chopper going past. And she saw Sting's face in the chopper. <laughs> screaming. <laughs> she only saw him for a second, but it was definitely Sting. <laughs> this was such a big lie that it threw the guy. <coughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> By this time, there's another guy coming up the train who knew everything about Sting. He says, there's one on every train. And uh, he, says, <laughs> he says, excuse me, pal, do you happen to know, was Dave Gilmore from Pink Floyd in this chopper? <laughs> Because him and Sting have been doing some recording together. Was Dave Gilmore in the chopper? So I went, uh, no. All <laughs> oh, right, so I said, uh, but, but his wife was. <laughs> but Ginger Gilmore was in a chopper with Sting. And Dave wasn't there. What's all that about there? The whole train's in a scandal. Oh, yeah. so, no, 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 not Dave Gilmore's wife, Sting's wife. She goes, what, Trudy Styler's dead as well? Fucking hell, that's fucking terrible. So they're all talking about this, and this other guy says, it's going to be like when Princess Di was killed, it will be on the news and, and the funeral, it will be on, on television all over the world, and Tony Blair will be at the funeral, and that bastard that runs Germany, Gerhard Schroeder, he'll be there because he's a big Sting fan. I read it in a magazine. I didn't know that, did you? So uh, then, then he said something very strange. He said, by the way, do you know that Gerhard Schroeder? He drinks his own piss to get the vitamins, you know, like soldiers do in the desert. You know, get a glass and they, they piss in a glass and they drink it all and they get the loads of vitamins. It sounds horrible, but apparently it's very good for you and makes your skin good too. <laughs> this time I'm just like, So the train stops again, and a lot more people get on. So everyone on the train, if you hear about Sting, Sting's dead, blah, 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 get him. <laughs> so uh, the guy gets on, and the big guy goes, he goes, yeah, Billy, Billy. He says, what? Were you just in the pub watching the news on TV? So this guy Billy says, I, I was, I. He says, was there anything about Sting being killed in a chopper crash down in Southampton? So Billy looks at me, he looks at his friend and he says, yeah. He goes, yeah, there was. So I thought, Jesus Christ, this is getting really strange now. <laughs> so the big guy says, really? He says, yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, Sting was in this chopper and it's going along and <clears throat> into the water and uh, there's nothing come up except Sting's head. <laughs> the police have got this big net and they've got his head out of the water like this and on the news you can see the net and the, this policeman standing with him like this and you can see Sting's head in the net like this. <laughs> so the guy, the big guy goes, fucking Christ almighty. Yeah, it's terrible. And the little guy looks at him. 
<laughs> so when the train stopped again, it was Kirkcaldy, my stop, so I got off the train. <laughs> <laughs> walking away, just looked back at the steam train. <laughs> First time I found it very, very funny. I just started laughing. And uh, when I got away from the train, I had to sit down and just cry with laughing. <laughs> so I was laughing all night and um, then I was laughing all morning. And uh, so I went back to get the train back to Edinburgh. And I forgot that all these people were going to be at the station waiting for the fucking train. It just didn't cross my mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> I got on the station and looked around, there's all these people looking at me like this. This woman, this woman says, there's a come back, there he is. So this guy comes out of the crowd and goes, oi, bastard! <laughs> what, me? Goes, yes, fucking you, Sting's not fucking dead, is he? So I said, isn't he? He goes, no, he's fucking well, no. So I said, oh, I was misinformed. She says, you're a fucking lying bastard, that's what you are. Why did you do that? You think that's funny or something? You had everyone fucking freaking out on the train. You think that's funny? She said, no, no, I didn't think it was funny, no. She says, you're a lying fucking bastard. I saw you laughing your head off when you got off the train. <laughs> she said, yeah, I, I, I did find it funny in the end, but when I said it, I didn't think it was funny. She said, what the fuck are you talking about, you fat gay bastard? So I said, it's funny you should mention that. Then I was telling him about the gay guy and the leg, and I was just trying to get, get him off me, and how he wasn't gay, he was asleep. And the more I talked, the more stupid it sounded. And the guy's listening to me, and in the end he says, that's the single most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life, but I believe you. <laughs> and he pointed down the platform to where there was nothing except snow. And he said, now fuck off. And I had to go and walk with my guitar in my little bag and just stand down at the end of the platform on my own in the snow with everyone looking at me. It's not easy being me sometimes. Let's <laughs> <laughs> on.
lovely song. Oh, no. <laughs> I wrote it myself. <laughs>
Yeah.